Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we have a few announcements this morning. Our Sunday school uh, preschoolers will receive their cradle roll doves today. And along with the kindergartens, kindergartners, they will receive their children's Bibles. Uh, in addition, next week, our third graders will receive their Bibles. Uh, coming up this week, long awaited, especially for those who missed out uh, last year when we ran out after an hour, the German supper is on Wednesday. Takeout only. We'll be serving from 4.30 to 6.30, and we have free delivery for shut-ins. So uh, you can place an order if you're a shut-in, and we will deliver. Uh, in addition, coming up on October 10th is our church auction. So if you have any items, uh, I was excited to get a, a basket of s delivery stuff this morning already. Uh, you can bring in whatever it is that you would like to donate for a themed basket and participate in that. With that, let us begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our entrance hymn from the Lutheran Book of Worship, page 364, is Son of God, Eternal Savior. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you call us to work in your vineyard and leave no one standing idle. Set us to our tasks in the work of your kingdom and help us to order our lives by your wisdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now enjoy some special music from the choir.
First lesson is from Jeremiah chapter 11, verses 18 through 20. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds, but I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. And I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. We will read responsibly Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name, in your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye has seen the ruin of my foes. The second lesson is from James chapter 3, verse 13 to chapter 4, verse 10. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For there is envy and selfish ambition. There will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do you not know from your cravings that, you are, that are war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures, adulterers, do not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that it is for nothing that the scripture says God yearns jealousy for the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. But he gives us all the more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy into dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Here ends the second lesson. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. They went on from there and passed through Galilee, and Jesus did not want anyone to know. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve. And he said to them, 
If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, this is the second time in Mark's gospel that Jesus predicts his death and resurrection, and it's the second time that the disciples do not catch on to what he's saying. They do not understand what he was saying, it says, and the disciples are afraid to ask him about it. If you recall, the first time Jesus predicted his crucifixion. Peter took him aside and rebuked him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Then Jesus rebuked him right back, saying, get behind me, Satan. Now the disciples don't want to risk it. They are afraid not only to express any opposition to Jesus' plan, but to ask any questions about it at all. Their minds are struggling against the plain meaning of what Jesus is saying. In fact, they don't actually want to know what he's telling them. They're terrified of knowing it. There seems to be a complete disconnect between what Jesus is saying Uh, and the disciples' response, because immediately after Jesus has spoken about his complete emptying of himself in suffering, the disciples begin arguing about who is the greatest. They become caught up in what appears to be a childish game of king of the hill. The three favorites, however, you remember, went up the hill, Peter, James, and John, with Jesus, and they experienced the transfiguration, while the other nine were left down at the bottom. And while they were waiting for Jesus and the three to come back, they were asked to cast out a spirit from a boy who was mute. But they weren't able to do it. So we can imagine the exchange as they're following along between the three favorites and the other nine. Well, we can't tell you about anything that happened on the mountain because it's a secret. And of course, they're not going to tell then that Peter was told by God to listen rather than talking. And of course, we can imagine the three will be saying, well, Uh, If we were down there, we could have exercised that demon, right? We're the good ones. All the smack talking in the world was going on. Well, this is where we too become implicated uh, since we get entangled in this same game. We too scramble to get to the top, to be first, and we think to earn God's pleasure for our successes. We strive to earn titles for ourselves from MVP of T-ball all the way up to high school athlete of the year, from most sacrificing mother to favorite beloved grandma, from class president to city council member, from most award-winning 4-H competitor to farmer of the year. We crave accolades for our striving. When no one notices or applauds our efforts, we're disappointed and we can even become resentful. Now inside the church, of course, things are no different, even for pastors. Our selfless work for the sake of the church, becomes a source of pride. The irony, all these things we do for God, 
become great things in our minds, marking us a cut above the rest. It is true, as Luther noted, that arrogance attends the slightest success. Something happens in our hearts and we can't help believing our own press. So here comes Jesus with some instructions for his disciples. The more I read it, the more uncomfortable I become. If anyone wants to be first, he will be last of all and servant of all. The more I read, read it, the more I knew I was in trouble. If anyone wants to be first, he will be last of all and servant of all. So a desire to be first is itself a killing disqualification? God holds that against you? I can't control my wish to be better than others. Those thoughts come to me uninvited. They seep unwanted into the basement of my heart. As soon as I mop them up, the muddy waters eventually reappear. You can't help your wants. Surely you can't be held accountable for your desires. Can that be the gourd that poisons the whole pot of stew? Jesus' subsequent words about receiving children didn't make me feel any better about myself because there are plenty of times that I haven't done that. The text left me uneasy. Uneasy that things between me and my God have gone south. Uneasy about God's judgment, fearing that he will dig up the corpses that I have buried in my heart. That's where the text left me. But I can't say amen, not yet, anyway. Because you see, that's not where Jesus left me, nor where he leaves you. Jesus, who was first in every way and deserved it, still did not wish glory for himself. He did not count equality with God as something to be grasped. Instead, he made himself nothing and took on the form of a servant, a suffering servant, as Isaiah describes him. He became last of all and servant of all. He humbled himself by becoming obedient unto death, even death on a cross. And it is his obedience, his selfishness, his humility, that pleased his father. And so his father exalted him and gave him a name that is above every name, first place, all glory to the risen Lord. And now you see the resurrected and exalted Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords, this one who endured the father's judgment and conquered death did not even for a second Forget about you. He did all this for you. He was wounded for your transgressions, crushed for your iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made you whole, and by his wounds you are healed. And that means that even your sinful desires will not be held against you nor will mine, thank God. You are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Son, the beloved Son, pleads your case on his behalf, offering his life as the ransom. And for his sake, God wipes your slate clean. The Father is pleased to do this for his Son, the beloved one, he delights to do this, to do his will, and his will is to save you. That is accomplished and promised to you in your baptism. Believe it and rejoice that Christ has called you his own. Despite yourself, your place at Christ's side is secure at the resurrection of the dead. 
You will reign with him as kings and queens, with clean hearts and with great joy, loved as the sons and daughters that you are. Amen. We'll now present the doves from the cradle roll to the children in this year's preschool class. And I invite Tiffany, the teacher, to come forward as she will uh, hand those out to our students. And as I read each child's name, the preschooler and his or her parents are invited to please come forward. And once you've received your cradle roll dove, uh, you can stay up because we'll be doing the uh, the Bibles as well. So, uh, Scarlett Lund, Otto Kruger, Sage Trebish, Chase Veenstra, and uh, Tenley Salonic. Comes Chase. The members of this congregation stand with parents and sponsors to share the responsibility for fostering the faith of each child who is adopted by God in the waters of baptism. In Sunday school, the congregation partners with the parents to teach the faith and to share the promises of Christ bestowed upon the child in baptism. The dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. On the front of the dove is the child's name and birth date, and on the back is the child's baptismal date and the name of the church in which they were baptized. May you, Chase, always feel welcome here in the family of God, and may you grow in faith and the knowledge of God's great love for you.
Great. And now we'll have our kindergartners come up as well. Uh, again, as your name is read, the kindergartner and his parents are invited to come up. And of course, Chase is already here, so we'll give you uh, your uh, Bible. Got a whole stack of them, so we just need a minute to find them. And I'd like to call up um, Leo Miller and Levi Siri. Paisley Grebner, Wes Crawl, and Jacob Micka. up here. When you were chosen by God and made his beloved children in the waters of baptism, a promise was made to place the holy scriptures in your hands. And this picture Bible today is a gift from the congregation so that you may know just how much Jesus loves you and that Jesus will never let you go. It makes a great bedtime story, and may you enjoy it, and may each of you grow in the knowledge of God's love for you each and every day of your life. Let us offer our thanks to God for our little ones in the church, and you guys can return to your seats. Thank you for your help, Tiffany. And now, in the words of the Apostles' Creed, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. O Lord of hosts, you oppose the proud and give grace to the humble. Help us by your Spirit to admit, submit ourselves to you and resist the devil that he would flee from us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, give all LCMC leaders and pastors the wisdom that comes down from above, that they may be peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. Let them sow among us in peace and grant a harvest of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, pacify our passions by your spirit that we may not be ruled by the jealousy and selfish ambition that give rise to disorder in every vile practice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, uphold this world in your order. Preserve the church and the preaching of your word against all enemies. 
Bless our homes that parents and children may serve one another faithfully and grow in instruction and faith until life's end. Give health and wisdom to all who serve in public office that their authority may be exercised for the benefit of our people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, look with kindness on the sick and those in any need, especially we lift up Leona Schottel, Sharon Rogatsky, Alice Trebish, William Matsky, Chrissy Rogatsky, and all we name in our hearts. We pray also for our farmers who have suffered losses in recent storms that you would provide for all their needs. We pray also for our military at home and abroad, especially Kylie Graff, Ethan Langseth, Je Jesse Kettner, Emily Went, Joseph Went, and Tabor Gluth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, give us faith to draw near to your altar in repentance that we may receive your Son who gives us new clean hearts as he draws near to us in his body and blood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, grant that what we ask from you may not be squandered after our passions, but sought rightly in faith, that we may receive them and put them to service for you and our neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, for all is ready. Uh, just a quick note, uh, we do have hand sanitizer available as you come forward. We encourage you to use that. Uh, and we also have it located on either side. You can drop your communion cups uh, in the bin uh, on your way back to your uh, pews.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive now this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to release all the Sunday school teachers and helpers and uh, we will close uh, with uh, from the Lutheran Book of Worship, page 424, Lord of glory, you have bought us. Mm -hmm.